Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie, My Sister's Keeper, released in the year 2009. The movie opens up with the narration of a little girl, Anna, who mentions that, unlike other babies, her birth was engineered by doctors for a particular purpose. She goes on to say that her life's sole purpose is to save her ill sister, Kate. Later, Anna visits a pawn shop and sells her 14-karat gold chain. She then starts narrating about her mother, Sarah, who left her professional career as a lawyer to care for her elder daughter and now works full-time making meals and maintaining hygiene for Kate. Anna also mentions her aunt, Kelly, is working part-time to assist her sister in taking care of Kate. Here, we get to know that Kate is suffering from cancer and is dying soon. But her mother, Sarah, is not willing to give up on her first child and is doing everything she can to keep her alive. The whole family gathers and cheers Kate up, and each of them is trying their best to help her fight cancer. The scene then shifts to Kate's father, Brian, who narrates about the life of having a sick child. On the other hand, Kate can be seen sick and vomiting blood the whole morning. Cut to the next scene, Anna and her brother, Jesse, travel to the town after school and stop at a metro station. Here, Anna tells Jesse that she can do it on her own. It seems like the brother-sister duo is planning for something big. Anna then visits the most renowned lawyer of the state, Alexander Campbell, who has the record of winning 91% of his cases. When Campbell inquires Anna about her visit, she tells him that she wants to sue her parents for taking control of her body without her permission and consent. She further mentions that her sister Kate is suffering from acute promelocytic leukemia, which requires a continuous donation of blood cells and organs. Anna also tells Campbell that she's been donating different aspects of her body to Kate since her birth, and now her parents want her to donate her kidney to Kate. Anna does not want to donate the kidney because she's well aware of the consequences that will be brought by it. She tells the lawyer that she wants to live a normal life, play games, give birth, and do many other things which will be impossible if she donates the kidney. At first, Campbell does not believe Anna, but later, when Anna provides him with all of her medical records, he's bound to believe her. Anna then hands over $700 to Campbell and requests him to take her case and fight for her, to which he agrees. The scene then flashes back in time, where Sarah checks on a sleeping Kate and discovers some marks on her back. Sarah assumes that her daughter is suffering from anemia, but after the treatment, the doctor hands her a card of an oncologist. After visiting the oncologist, Dr. Farquad, she tells her that Kate is suffering from leukemia cancer and that they can do nothing to completely cure the disease. Hearing this, Sarah gets devastated and starts crying. Later, another doctor named Dr. Chance mentions that Kate will require the donation of various blood cells and organs to remain alive. He also informs the parents that neither of their organs is compatible with Kate, and eventually suggests they plan for a test tube baby, who will be a 100% match for Kate. Back in the present, Dr. Chance can be seen explaining to Kate's family and other relatives about Kate's degrading health conditions. He informs them that Kate's kidneys have stopped working and that she will be needing a donation soon. Later, while Sarah is talking with Kate in her hospital room, she receives a notice from the court stating that she has been served. Sarah has no idea about what's going on until she reads the notice and finds out that it's Anna who has sued her parents for using her body parts without her consent. Soon, Anna approaches Sarah and informs her about everything, including that she has got herself a lawyer to fight the case. She also mentions that she doesn't want to donate her body parts anymore. Hearing this from her daughter, Sarah gets angry and slaps Anna. Crying, Anna walks out of the hospital room. Later, the firefighter, Brian, receives an emergency call from his wife and rushes back home from his job. After reaching home, everyone can be seen gathering around Anna as she wants to say something. Here, Anna tells everyone that she does not want to be treated as an unwanted child and keep donating her body parts to Kate. Eventually, she mentions that she does not want to do the kidney transplant and just wants to live a long and carefree life. She tells them that the doctor has informed her about the consequences of the transplant and that she must be careful for the rest of her life if she goes through with it. Anna wants to enjoy her life, play sports, drink alcohol, and have kids in the future, which will be impossible after the transplant. Listening to this, Sarah tries to make Anna understand that Kate is her sister and she needs her but Anna is in no mood to listen to her and walks away, yelling that her life is also important. To some extent, Anna is right, and Brian does not stop her from walking away. 
In the following scene, Brian brings Anna to his workplace to lighten up her mood. Everyone at the workplace loves Anna, and she spends quality time there. After some time, Sarah also arrives there and talks with Brian about the kidney transplant. Brian tries to make Sarah understand that it's Anna's decision to donate her body parts, and mentions that she's no longer a child to force everything upon. The next day, Sarah visits Campbell's office and tells him that the case he's fighting for Anna makes no sense. She even states that Anna's just 11 years old and the state has no laws for the emancipation of a minor less than 14 years of age. Campbell opposes her statement and tells her that despite Anna's early age, she too has the right to fight for herself. When Campbell asks Sarah if she thinks that she has taken everything too far against Anna, Sarah leaves his office, telling him that she will see him in court. Afterward, Kate can be seen hiding under the blanket, refusing to go out in the sun and have fun. Brian tries to wake her up as she needs to get some fresh air and stretch her muscles. After some time, Kate wakes up and tells everyone that she's feeling sick and also insecure about her appearance for going out in public. Hearing this, Sarah immediately shaves her head to boost Kate's confidence. Later, the whole family goes out, has fun, and also clicks many pictures together. In the next scene, Kate is in the hospital room skimming through her slam book that she's prepared about her family. She mentions that her disease has ruined her family. Looking at her brother's pictures, she speaks to herself and feels sorry for him as she has taken all her parents' attention, despite her brother needing it the most, as he is dyslexic. On the other hand, Sarah and Campbell meet each other in court and visit the judge, DeSalvo, in her office. After getting to know about Anna's case from Campbell and Sarah, Judge DeSalvo wishes to talk with Anna to understand the case better. Later, after Campbell and Sarah leave the office, Anna is brought there. Judge DeSalvo asks Anna about her wish, and she replies that she doesn't want her parents to take control of her body. In the following scene, the doctors approach Sarah and inform her about Kate's body not reacting to the medications and treatments. They mention that Kate's immune system is getting worse and she is slowly reaching the end. Kate can be seen looking at all this from her hospital room and is also well aware of her impending death. However, Sarah loves her daughter so much that she refuses to believe that she is dying. She's willing to go to any extent to save her daughter. When the doctor suggests Sarah take Kate home and spend quality time with her, Sarah yells at the doctor and urges them to prepare for the transplant. At the same time, as Kate is looking through her slam book, she spots Taylor, her first love. The scene then flashes back to the time when Kate meets Taylor in the hospital. Taylor is also a cancer patient who is there for his chemotherapy session. Kate is immediately attracted to Taylor, and the two exchange their numbers. Following that, the two frequently meet each other and spend quality time together. Kate can be seen very happy after meeting Taylor. Despite Kate getting sick and losing hair because of chemo, Taylor supports her and takes good care of her. One day, Taylor asks Kate if she would like to go to the prom night happening in the hospital for sick teenagers, and Kate agrees. Next, Kate can be seen getting ready for the prom, and everyone in the family is very happy to see her smiling. Sarah clicks many pictures of Kate before she goes to the prom with Taylor. The duo attend the prom event, enjoy dancing, and have a brilliant time together. After a few days, Kate is angry at Taylor for not replying to her messages or contacting her since the prom night. Seeing her daughter desperate about Taylor, Sarah inquires with the hospital staff about Taylor, but sadly finds out that he has died. In the following scene, Brian goes to visit Kate after her dialysis and gets to know that she wants to go to the beach. Brian inquires with Dr. Chance and gets his permission to take Kate to the beach. Dr. Chance also informs Brian to return Kate to the hospital before 7 p.m. Brian then discharges Kate for the day and arranges everything required to take her to the beach. But when Brian enters the house to gather some mattresses and beach clothes, Sarah spots Kate inside the car and tries to stop Brian from taking her to the beach. Sarah mentions that it's not good for Kate's health and demands Kate be returned to the hospital. Despite this, Brian takes Kate to the beach, threatening Sarah for divorce if she doesn't join them. Later, Kate can be seen happy on the beach and after a while, Sarah also joins them with Kelly. The family enjoys a good time together, and Kate is returned to the hospital before 7 p.m. as suggested by the doctor. The scene then shifts to the court where the hearing is going on about Anna's case. In the meantime, we're shown a flashback where Kate tries to take her own life after learning about Taylor's death. Luckily, Anna arrives there in time and stops Kate from doing so. 
After that, Kate expresses her want to visit Taylor once she passes away. Back in the court, Sarah is interrogating Anna, who is no longer willing to donate her body parts to her sister. Sarah mentions that she knows her daughter very well and suspects that there's someone who is influencing her to act this way. Seeing Anna defend herself, Jesse stands from his seat and urges Anna to tell the truth. Anna, on the other hand, tries to stop Jesse, but the latter comes in front and tells everyone that Anna is actually following Kate's advice and refusing to donate her kidney. He reveals to everyone that Kate herself does not want to live and is ready to die. At first, Sarah does not believe it, but when Brian also supports Jesse's claims, she is bound to believe. Meanwhile, Campbell walks out of the courtroom without any notice and collapses while running in the hallway. It is then disclosed that Campbell is actually epileptic, and the main reason he took Anna's case is that he knows how it feels to have no control over your own body. After some time, the court procedure resumes with Campbell back to his consciousness. Judge DeSalvo makes her decision, but wishes to meet Kate in person before announcing her final verdict. When Judge DeSalvo is finished talking with Kate, the family members and other relatives enter Kate's room and suggest different remedies to fight cancer and overcome her mental situation. Brian, on the other hand, orders some pizza to lighten up the mood. Later, Kate asks everyone to leave except her mother, Sarah. When everyone else is gone, Kate hands over her slam book to Sarah and tells her that she's ready to die. Sarah cries and sleeps beside Kate, holding her hand. That night, Kate dies in her mother's arms. In the next scene, it's Kate's funeral, and everyone can be seen crying. After a few days, Mr. Campbell visits Anna and hands over some documents, notifying her that they've won the case and that he's able to maintain his 91% success rate. Before leaving, he also tells Anna that she can visit him anytime if she needs anything. In the last scene, Anna narrates how their life has changed after Kate's death. She mentions that Sarah has resumed her profession as a lawyer, and Brian has taken an early pension from his job and has started training the troubled city youths. Jesse has also continued his studies and has managed to get a scholarship in one of the best art academies in New York. The movie ends with Anna mentioning that despite their busy lives, the whole family takes a vacation during Kate's birthdays and visits her favorite location in Montana. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.